What's going on everyone? It's Justin here and welcome to the bedroom tour. I'm gonna to be giving you guys a tour of the primary bedroom of my new dream condo project and all of the custom elements that went into the design, the tech and the functionality from the bedroom itself and the entertainment system, as well as the closet, storage, steam closet, and of course the primary bathroom ensuite as well which I have shown you a preview of a couple months ago. The primary bedroom was one of the most important elements of my new condo because in my previous unit, I actually just slept in the guest room and used the primary bedroom as a home office. So with this one, I really did go and customize it, pick some specific pieces that have all of the tech boxes checked off, and I'm gonna show you all the little quirks and accessories that I've added throughout this setup. As always, everything is gonna be linked down below, but if you guys want to check out any of the products as well as the other episodes from this series, I'm gonna leave them linked as well. But let's just go ahead and jump right into it, beginning with the bedroom. So beginning with the bed, this is just a simple low fabric bed, which is really similar to what I had in the previous unit. And I feel like with beds, I've typically gone with a really similar look and it's all about minimalism, but I also like having a low bed in particular with a nice surround that goes all the way around. The bedroom before in this unit was actually really dark and I had everything painted in white because I like a nice bright and airy look looking out into the view of the ocean, but I still feel like there has to be some level of contrast in every bedroom project and especially in the feature wall. So I went with a color called Hill Navy and these vertical halfway slats at least add a good level of texture to it without taking away from all the other design details of the room. These lights are also hanging ones because I typically don't like it when a light is on a string. And on each side of the bed, I have the Blue Dot Peak Nightstand, which goes really well with the white oak furniture and the white oak floors. And it has just enough storage because it's always nice to have some storage next to the bedside. And of course, accessories such as the Courant Catch 3 wireless charger allows me to wirelessly charge my phone at night while having my wallet and keys next to it. And on my nightstand, I also have the Hatch, which is a really good wake up and and unwind light and sound machine that also has an alarm clock that is built in. It's a very soft finish that is the same color as a throw blanket and each day about 30 minutes before the designated wake up time it will have a nice sunrise light. On the other side I have a Vitruvi humidifier and I always like to have the humidifier on when I'm sleeping. It just really helps with breathing and quality of sleep. So you fill it up with water each day and you set a time on it. I have it usually set to about eight hours and just at like the minimum setting. And that's an accessory that I definitely recommend, especially if you live in a condo where the HVAC system a lot of times is really, really dry. So when it comes to the bedding, I've gone with pretty much the same bed that I had before, and that was a custom one from Helix. It is actually the smaller one. They also have the Lux one that has an additional topper to it. But with the sleep quiz, you're able to customize all the different preferences and it will recommend a bed for you. And that is what I did in this case. The actual sheets and the blanket is from Brooklinen, and I'm a really big fan of their stuff. I also have their pillow as well. And honestly, I've had like a gray before, but I've just gone with the white once again. And on the end, we have this blanket from Edition. And being one of my favorite hotel chains to stay at, I figured I would just go ahead and bring a piece of it home. And this is why I like just have this on the corner because it ties in a lot of the different tones and colors from this room. So here we are in the bedroom theater and in front of me is a few things. This is the Sony OLED 65 inch TV from 2023. It is their top end TV at the moment and especially in a bedroom where you don't exactly need the brightest TV because it's not exactly pleasant before you're going to sleep. Going with an OLED TV just makes a lot of sense. The blacks, the contrast, and everything looks super amazing. And I mean, Sony does an incredible job in both their mini LED and their OLED TVs. In the living room, I have a mini LED TV that is able to really reach that max brightness on a sunny day, especially in a condo where there's windows all around it. But I mean, I absolutely love this TV. And in this case, 65 inches was the perfect size because the room is just about 11 feet long. In my previous bedroom, I had a 55 inch TV, but below that I've also put a Sonos Arc, and that is probably my favorite soundbar of all time. Some of the budget options from Sonos that are a little bit cheaper are still really solid, 
but for an overall room feeling sound, especially when paired with a set of stereo speakers and I'm gonna talk about in a second, this has been really good. Another design touch that I also wanted to add was speakers in the ceiling that are connected to the main Sonos Arc soundbar. Because the ceilings are being dropped already to have LED lights installed, I figured it made sense just to have it all in the ceiling and reduce one surface or accessory that is going to get dust on it. The sideboard that everything is sitting on is the Ethnocraft Linea. And I picked this up from Gabriel Ross, the same place that I picked up the Blue Dot nightstands. And I mean, Ethnocraft is a company that I absolutely absolutely love and I've used it in so many areas of this condo. It's a very high quality light oak finish with amazing texture and it just has like that perfect tone to it. A lot of times with an oak finish it is really hit or miss but this Scandinavian design is really what I was going for in certain areas of this project and this sideboard is not only able to have a few drawers for storage but also a few bottom cabinets and that is where my whole multimedia setup is with the Apple TV as well as the cable box. On top of that, I just have this random lamp that is set to a Govi timer and it just adds a nice accent. It doesn't really fill the whole room, but I feel like with a bedroom, it's important to have different lamps just to add a touch to it, especially at night when you can add some warmth. And in the middle, I have the home and Hadfield watch case. And this is perfectly enough for my mini collection, which is four pieces. So here I have the Omega Moon Swatch with an Amazon band. This is just like a really light, easy watch. It does have a quartz movement, but I mean, it does look pretty good. And I also have the AP Royal Oak 15400 ST, and this is on a rubber B band. I usually switch between the stainless steel band and the rubber band just seasonally, but I found that I really like wearing it with the rubber band especially. And here is the GMT2 Sprite. And what I'm wearing right now is the Rolex Daytona Panda. And so, this is where I have my mini watch collection and just have it, you know, placed here. And whenever I need to grab something, it's just nice to have them on display. But of course, when I'm away, I usually have it in a safe. And below that is just a bit of storage for the extra watch parts, spare bands, and the rings. I don't really have too much jewelry, to be honest, because I find that I lose it all the time, but I really like stuff like chrome hearts. And next to that, I have the Hermes cellular plate, and that is where I just keep keys. And besides that, it's another small tech touch, and that is a Diptyque scent machine. You just go ahead and place the insert of your favorite Diptyque scent in, and there's a mini fan that keeps it running for about two hours before it automatically stops, and I think it looks pretty awesome. So now we've made our way into the closet and there's a few objectives when it came to what I wanted in terms of functionality and tech while also having as much storage as possible. And before these were two sliding closets and I absolutely hate sliding closets because I just find you don't end up utilizing a lot of the space in the middle and having to slide the doors back and forth just makes it a little bit inconvenient. And so I had it completely opened up and from there have open cabinets on one side and on the other side have a hybrid of a few of the things that I really wanted. One of which was open shelving. This right here is where I have hangers for some of the clothes that I might wear the most as well as large jackets. And you guys have watched the channel for long enough to know that I pretty much just wear these black represent hoodies and a variety of black thin jackets and hoodies on a daily basis because it is cozy. So I just have these all hanging right here with a custom metal bar that was made and it's just enough room to fit, I'd say like eight to 10 essential pieces and that is where I grab most of my clothes. In terms of what I wear nowadays, I mean, it has gotten a lot more simple. I just stick to like black, gotten rid of most of the name brands minus this jacket that I recently picked up and of course, I have my Canucks jersey that has been sitting here for quite a while. I don't really wear this, but I just love the flying skate one. So if you guys are Canucks fans, you know that this is the best jersey design ever. I used to really be into shoes, and so I still have some room for some shoes up top just to store when I'm not wearing them. But for the most part, I sold most of my shoes. I just like really consolidated and kept the wardrobe as simple as possible nowadays. Below this little counter area though, there's also some drawers. And in these drawers, I just have my essential t-shirts from Uniqlo, sorted into four different categories here from the lights, the darks. I'm too lazy to fold them, but sometimes I might roll them up. And below that, it's the pants and swim trunks and towels and stuff. 
Over on this side as well, there is one specific touch that I really, really wanted in this project, and that is a steam closet. I've seen videos of the LG Styler over the years, and I just wanted to have one for myself because it is just a cool piece of tech. And as you know, if you wash your hoodie all the time, it's just gonna get like ruined and faded, but I do eat out a lot. And so I don't really like the smell of food and lingering scents on my clothes. And so a lot of times after I come home, I'll just put it in the steam closet and it utilizes like water vapor and it shakes it out. And so it is really good for getting rid of the odors, but also for steaming clothes that need to be ironed out typically. So dress shirts, Dress pants are really good for that, but I mean, my specific use is just to put clothes in and give it a quick refresh. It's relatively inexpensive for what it is, and I absolutely love it. So I've also added it to my next project. And over on this side is just the functional cabinet storage. I've set it up in a way where there is two layers of hangers as well as a sill to be able to put different accessories and duffel bags. And on the top, there's room for boxes and shoes. Whereas in the other two cabinets, I have my luggage, safe, and one of my favorite design touches, again, is the buster and punch handles. These are extra large handles that match the kitchen and the bathroom that we're gonna talk about next. But the knurled hardware that is large and bold is so good. And in this case, I actually went with just flat panel cabinets because I wanted to keep it quite minimal and not take away from the rest of the design touches in the bedroom. But now that we've talked about the closet and the hallway, let's hop over to the bathroom because that is one of my favorite aspects of the entire condo. So last but not least, it's time to show you guys the primary ensuite bathroom. And this is actually the first time I've done a renovation to the primary bathroom because it honestly just wasn't something that I prioritized a lot in my previous projects. But with this one, I really wanted to go into the details and figure out how to optimize the layout of a condo bathroom that maybe isn't the largest, but had enough room to be able to work with and figure out some ideas. Originally, there was two sinks, but instead I went with one sink in the middle and also tried to change all of the cabinets from open cabinets to individual drawers. With that, there are six different drawers and it allows for space to not only have all the things that you wanna put in there, as well as travel accessories accessories, but I also ensured that there was a power outlet in both sides to be able to charge things such as your shaver, toothbrush, and have a hair dryer that is always hidden and easily accessible right here. That is definitely one of the quirks that I noticed in my previous condo where I had my hair dryer just hanging on the side and it would always get knocked over. And so one of the optimizations was that. And I also love the design of the infinity stone countertops that flow from the front all the way along and to the backsplash as well with the faucets coming out of the wall. Of course, I also went ahead with buster and punch handles here and it is the same knurled matte black handles that I have in the kitchen as well and one that I've used in previous projects. If you guys haven't seen my kitchen tour, I did a video about that entire setup and it turned out really, really nicely. And I've talked about how I've used buster and punch in so many products now and just in the bathroom and bedroom alone, I have six handles along the bathroom hardware, but also in the closet area as well where I've gone with the extra large handles and the door handle is from their linear collection. If you guys wanna go ahead and check out their site as well, they have a very wide selection in different finishes and lengths, and it really has become a staple in all of my projects. But when it came to the stone on the walls and in the shower, I went with a Pietra Grey also from Infinity Stone. I really like the dark gray look to it and I feel like this bathroom is moody in a lot of ways and it's honestly one of my favorite parts of the entire condo. Going with floor to ceiling stone if you can is always a great effect because it looks super high quality, it's a durable surface for the bathroom and along the back I of course have the hangers but also a heated towel rack on one side and the way the shower is laid out is that it is completely walk in. There's no swinging doors or hinges and there was originally a bathtub here but I actually moved the bathtub over to the secondary bathroom because I really don't ever take baths. And so having a walk-in shower and a larger shower was great. And it features the new Kohler system that has a hybrid of a taptic button and also a touch capacitive screen that allows you to control the specific temperatures, profiles, 
and the different spray heads. I went with a handheld spray head wand to be able to clean the bathroom easily, but also with a large rain shower type design. And I also wanted to make the niche large enough to be able to have all the different products there. But I have to say the bathroom is one that turned out really, really nicely. The toilet is nothing special when it comes to the tech side of things. I really don't care too much about that. Um, but I did have a plug added for bidet in case I'm planning to sell the unit in the future and the next owner may want to add that. Some of the other tech touches include something that is really simple and that is just an anti-fog mirror with LED lights. And this one specifically, you can control the color temperature as well as the brightness options. And I also have some accessories, whether it is the hair dryer that is plugged in or the electric toothbrush which is from Lifen. The one I'll be using is the Lifen Wave and I've also used their hair dryers in the past but the Life & Wave is really the best toothbrush you can go for when it comes to amazing battery life, the power that it is able to provide, but also the oscillating pattern being side to side instead of just the typical rotation. And when it really comes down to the tech of it, which we got to experience at CES, it is the most impressive toothbrush on the market in that category. The price point starts at $69 for the ABS model, $79 for the aluminum, and $99 for the stainless steel. And I mean, it is just the apple of toothbrushes in terms of design, functionality, and the fact that it's just a very competitive product on paper. It even uses a magnetic charger, which is super cool, but it's a toothbrush that I'm using because of the power and the oscillation. And one other great feature is to replace the brush heads. It is $10 for a set of three, $17 for a set of six. And so it is overall a great value. And I mean, just look at the design. It fits my aesthetic perfectly. So when it comes to the bathroom, I would say it is a really good balance. You can have like a moody tone to it, but you can also really have it nice and bright. And I find that there's two sides and that is the same with all of the projects that I've done in the past where it is kind of that 50 50, but this bathroom definitely leans towards the darker side. As we made our way through the primary suite though, we started with the bedroom, then to the closet, which takes you through to the bathroom. But this is where the tour ends. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below if you guys have any questions about what went into this project. And also make sure you check out some of the other videos from the series. And I'll see you all in the next video.